I had to booty call the task manager to close Unity a shameful number of times during this project. What's up guys? In this video we're going to be exploring shapes, fractals, buckups, and the gloriousness of Unity and what we can do through code to generate worlds much different from our own. Other than my experiences in Blender manipulating meshes, I really have no idea how mesh generation works. Creating the vertices is somewhat understandable, but you start talking about triangulating vertices and well, I get really, really confused. So I spent a couple weeks just learning about how mesh generation worked. I journeyed through the deep jungles of YouTube to get to the sources of all truth, Brackies and that maddest of lads, Sebastian League. Honestly, I don't even know why you're watching me. Go watch him. Anyways, if you're still here, his channel is fantastic. So I went through the Brackey's tutorial of generating a plane, and then I decided to move through Sebastian's way of generating spheres. And I applied some of the same principles to the generation of my regular plane. And what I thought was interesting was how when I centered the camera directly above the plane, you can pretty clearly see a pattern that is very similar to the Perlin noise function that is being generated. I kept doing my research on mesh generation and I found this nifty website called Cat Like Coding. This guy must be wicked smart and he has made some really cool tutorials on generating meshes and doing some really cool stuff in Unity in general. And with his help, I had this cool little transition function going between all these neat little 3D functions. And essentially each one of these shapes is really just a combination of sine and cosine waves. Personally, I I think helixes are the coolest naturally occurring shape in nature, so I set about modifying this graph to accommodate it. I wanted to make sure that I actually learned something, and my first couple versions had a couple extra chromosomes, if you get what I'm saying. And I was able to get some cool effects happening here when I was playing with the different input values, but I was not getting the effect that I was going for and that I had pictured in my mind. And after looking more closely at the function, I realized that my dumbass wasn't changing the radius of the helix as I was generating the cubes. So I essentially had a bunch of 2D helixes going at once, and even though it looked somewhat interesting, it wasn't what I was going for, and it wasn't really 3D. Once I got that worked out though, it looks friggin' sweet. And watching this graph go through the different transitions gives me funny feelings. Anyways, back to mesh generation. The graph was more of a tangent because I was really just placing cubes. So I was determining the vertices, but I was not actually creating a mesh. And to test my brain power, I decided to generate my own primitive shape. In Blender and in Unity, I noticed that there is no primitive mesh for a pyramid. And after uncovering this conspiracy, I decided to create my own, and it was fun in a very sadistic kind of way. To get the vertices in the right place, I realized that a pyramid can really be thought of as a series of squares layered on top of each other. And as they go towards the top, they get smaller, until you get to one vertex. This really wasn't too hard. But after this is when I got to the really hard part of actually triangulating the mesh, which made me want to throw my tie in the ceiling fan. I started plugging along, but it was not working well, like super fucked up. So I started to draw one face of the pyramid at a time, and boy pyramids are not fun. On each side of the pyramid, the parameters for triangulating the mesh actually changed pretty drastically. It took me a while to figure out the pattern so that I could create an algorithm to complete this pyramid. And at about this point is where my brain cells were about to go on strike. I sorted it out and the first three faces generate beautifully. But when I swung around the back, I realized that my pyramid's ass has a flaw like no other. It's got a huge hole in it. And essentially I had to write a function to generate that last face of the mesh. But I got it working and for proof, here's a complete rotation of my pyramid. But before you start throwing awards at me, I totally forgot to put a bottom face on the pyramid. But who are you? The pyramid, please? And at this point, I got my fill of mesh generation for the moment and went to something along the same vein, but something extremely satisfying to watch. Fractal. If you don't know what a fractal is, a fractal is a never-ending pattern, and they can get infinitely complex, and they're kind of self-similar as you scale down. Here are a couple of my favorites. And I decided to make a 3D fractal of this champ right here. So yeah, fractals are badass, but here I learned that my computer's testicular fortitude is really quite mediocre and he did not have a good time. This is when I pretty much had task manager on speed dial, I crashed this bitch so many times. As it shakes out, don't go higher than a recursive depth of three in order to generate a fractal. And that was before it even became a 3D fractal. Here's what my performance testing looked like. Here's one, all good, as expected. Here's two, a little slow, but we're still fine. And with three, it chokes hard and I had to booty call the task manager again. 
And the reason that this is crashing is really due to a simple cause. In show business, they call it a shit ton of math. So I refactored this bad boy to actually generate the fractal iteratively instead of recursively, and that seemed to fix my issues. And I officially exited out of the task manager. Then I started playing around with different shapes and which fractal looked the best. Honestly, it was the spheres. I also wanted to punch test just how many fractals I could have going at once, and I was quite impressed. Unity really didn't mind too much, and I didn't start dropping frames until I had three fractals with a depth of six each. So I backed off a little bit and created a little player to walk amongst the fractals, and it looked super cool. It really made me wish that I had a VR headset to go buck wild with this and walk, walk amongst the fractals, maybe in the future. And it was at this point that I took a week off to go to Cancun with my wife. And when I got back, I finished Sebastian League's Planet Generation playlist, and I was gonna start making a game with these fractals involved and maybe some parkourness, but to be honest, it didn't really pique my interest and it wasn't really going anywhere. So I decided to back off and leave it where it stands. Uh, I learned a ton, but I have some other projects that I'm really anxious to start working on. That is gonna do it for this video. Thanks for watching and have a fantastic damn day. I saw a UFO outside the crib last night. Heard a knock on my